What is up, M Effers? I hope you're having a lovely day. Got my coffee here today because I'm a bit of a pansy. Unless there's whiskey mixed into it. Now, not not gonna do that. It's too early for that. Anyway, today we are going to talk about how to target fish bass, largemouth and smallmouth, and spotted bass for that matter, in river systems and anywhere with a lot of current. You know, me and Joe had this tournament this last weekend, and what I feel is important to share with you guys is anything that I learned myself. You know, obviously I've been fishing for a long time, I've learned a lot fishing tournaments and stuff, and I wanna pass that on to you. I feel like there's a huge hole right now in the YouTube fishing community with tournament fishermen. There's plenty of tournaments on TV. You got guys like Brandon Palinick and, and Scott Martin filming all their tournaments at a super high level, so props to them for doing that. And then you got guys doing tournament review videos. Hey, I caught this, I caught my fish on this product, um, doing this, but it always seems to be their sponsor's products. What I'm gonna do today is tell you exactly how I caught my fish on the exact baits, whether they're my sponsor's products or not, to help you learn to, to navigate these river systems and how you really can approach them because they can be a giant headache to try to figure some things out. I am by no means a river fishing expert. Honestly, I've only fished probably five or six river systems uh, in my life, uh, but I've fished them enough to where I've learned some things that really helped me catch fish and Joe, too, helped us catch fish in this tournament this last week. So I'm going to share those with you right now. Let's do it. So I'm going to lay some knowledge on you to start with. The most important thing about fishing a river system is its current. I know, rocket science. But let's get into that a little bit, talk about how that affects the fish, especially in the summertime. You know, in the springtime uh, or in the fall, Springtime, they're up, they're up spawning shallow, so this kind of can go out the window because they're in slack water areas for other reasons. And in the fall, a lot of the bait moves up shallow back into some of those backwater sloughs and stuff, so that kind of throws this off as well. But we're going to talk about the three, four, five months during the middle of the year when I was up there, what some of these fish do in current. So fish in the river obviously are going to relate to current, but it might surprise you how much they relate to current and how little of a current break they need uh, to be sitting in there. For instance, largemouth, everyone thinks largemouth, you know, you're gonna fish for smallmouth on the main river, you're gonna go into the backwater sloughs with no current, stagnant water, with, with grass or lily pads or whatever, and go catch a largemouth, that is not true at all. A largemouth can be out there in the main river current where the current is absolutely ripping and be behind one little pole. I've seen it several times. I actually, I was down in Mississippi and the biggest fish I saw weighed while I was there was in the back of my boat, of course. A guy flipped a Texas rigged uh, trick worm behind a post that was about that big around. So don't be afraid or don't think that the largemouth out aren't out on the river in that current. Obviously, they need a current break, and an increase in current is going to pull those fish as close to those current breaks as possible. So let's talk about current breaks. When me and Joe were fishing this tournament, there's hundreds upon hundreds of wing dams on the river system. And the place that the fish set up on the wing dams, almost every time those active fish, they're going to be right out in front on the current side where the current is hitting that. Now, some of these wing dams are like 50 to 100 yards long and can stretch across an entire slough or an entire section of the river. Where do you focus on there? Well, a couple things. The ends and the most shallow side, generally when I was there and, and what I noticed, those will produce the, the biggest fish or the bulk of where your bites are going to be. Another thing to look for is wherever the current can rush through that eddy. A lot of times these, uh, these big long eddy, current break, jetty things, they have a hole in the middle so a boat can pass through uh, or it's just created a hole over time. That's where the fish are going to set up, is right where that current is pinching down. It's just like a pinch point with a bridge or anything like that. Another piece of structure we were actually planning to fish before we made the decision to go try out a largemouth area to start the first thing in the tournament, which really turned things around for us and changed our mindset on the quality of fish we could catch, was these day marker buoys. There's these giant day marker posts, I guess, um, that are on big rock piles out in the middle of the river. 
Now that's a super, super obvious place, but I think a lot of people in the tournament just blew by those and didn't even consider it. Now when we were there uh, pre-fishing, and you probably saw some, but Joe pre-fished a day or two before I was there too, those things are absolutely money. You can catch giant smallmouth on those. There's no reason that a smallmouth or any other fish for that matter would see that and say, oh, that's too obvious. I'm not going to go set up on that. No, that's a, that's a great current break out in the middle of the river. A lot of them had 20, 25, 30 feet of water, 15 feet off the sides of them. And they did the same thing on those as they do on the eddies. They get right on the front of those. And if you just work the top water real hard and aggressive past those, usually they were going to blow it out of the water. A lot of times they missed it and you flip a tube back in there or flip whatever bait you want back in there and you will catch them. So let's talk about current a little bit more and some of the offshoots and slews. You know, the main place we ended up fishing the tournament, we actually shared with the guys that won the tournament beat us by about a pound. So there was obviously a ton of fish in that area. And what that was, that was a little narrow canal slew area that opened up into a giant backwater field with all these backwater canals and everything else. But the great thing about that was the current in there was stronger than anywhere in those backwaters because it was like one or two little narrow branches and it branched off into a giant interconnecting system of all these shallow backwater areas. So obviously in those areas there'd be much, much less or no current, but where we were fishing it was a, a pinch point, it was the main entry of water into that area. So there was a lot of current and for that reason there was a ton of largemouth and smallmouth in there. We didn't get on the smallmouth bite we figured would be in there. We actually caught a lot more largemouth. But what we were actually targeting in there a lot of times was two different things. So there was sand drops and then there was channel swing mud banks, which is crazy to think you could catch fish in a river with so much different types of habitat on mud banks. It's crazy, but it worked. So let's talk about the sand drops first. You know, and all the swings as the, the little narrow canal meandered through, there would be on the shallow side of a point, every time it made a point, there would, it would turn to sand. So over time that had eroded down, washed down, so there was sand out on all the points. Well on the back side of the points, before that sand turned into mud to the steeper mud banks, there was a sand drop off right there. So it dropped from like inches deep, uh, a lot of times down into like six to eight feet of water. Now the bass were stacked there. They loved that smallmouth and largemouth, but mostly largemouth. And especially if there was a tree or we actually caught a bunch of fish by that marker buoy, anything that was there for them to get on, even a little piece of grass. Um, and they were loaded on those areas. Now as the current picked up, what those fish did on the second day, the current was so much stronger in there. They, they were no longer back behind the sand drops. They moved right up there onto the sand. They were, some of them in like six or eight inches of water, it looked like, or at least that's where they were blowing our baits. Maybe they were sitting right off the back of it and coming up and hitting them. But the stronger the current, even in these little backwater areas, will send those fish as tight to the cover and the sides as possible. So that's what happened with the mud banks as well. The first day, you know, the, the fish weren't relating to them quite as well. The channel swing mud banks, but we did catch a few fish on them. You know, you probably saw us catch, I think I caught our biggest fish the first day on a mud bank that had some isolated grass patches on that. That's an awesome, awesome place for a largemouth or a smallmouth to set up behind those things. And, and we went back there day two with the current was super, super strong and all we could catch was small ones. I can't tell you where they went that day. Day two as well, they got really, really tight and they will tuck underneath any undercut banks. An increase in current is always going to send fish near deep undercut banks. Largemouth love that. I've done that in the Missouri River. I did that in Tennessee as well with big log jam piles. Stronger the current will send fish, especially largemouth, right up to new areas where they're super tight to a deep bank or a piece of cover. Let's talk about one more piece of structure. Um, that we actually caught a couple big fish and Joe caught his four and a half plus pound smallmouth on and that would be an island head. Whenever you're out on the main river, an entrance to a slough um, or just an island out on the main river, the front of that island almost always is a great place to take a look for a big smallmouth or a big largemouth. And those fish that are on the island heads are doing the exact same thing 
that the fish by the jetties and, and the wing dams are doing. They're sitting in the front of those and waiting for food to come pass by. And it especially helps if you see back in that slough, bait flipping or out on the point there's bait flipping. Anywhere there's bait in any of these areas is going to be absolutely key. And so that's what we found. The, the place we started day two, we got so lucky. Within five minutes, Joe had a little walking bay. He was working it. That big smallmouth came up and crushed it. And th these are big fish areas. You know, on these island heads, you're always looking for a piece of cover. A lot of times that's a tree or a lay down, uh, or even if there's rock up on the front of that, smallmouth love to get on those types of areas. You know, something that was actually really interesting about this area was it had nothing at all except for these giant sand humps that went up and down. That was, some, that was just enough for a big smallmouth to be sitting there and every single island on the whole river, it looks like it had some of these sand humps. So we got kind of lucky that we got on one that had some, but it was a perfect piece of cover for a big fish to sit in ambush and sit out in that main river current. So now that we've talked about what those bass like to do in different current, uh, increase in current, the different types of structure they like to hold on, let's get into the baits we used in the tournament. So I guess what we'll start with was the smallmouth. You know, anytime those smallmouth got on those different types of rock structures, whether that be a wing dam or a day marker island buoy thing or the front of an island, um, the best thing we could use was a topwater bait, a topwater popper. I started off with the six cent splashback popper. You saw me catch a bunch of fish on that at that private pond and I've been just whacking them on this bait like the last year. Have a ton of confidence in this bait. Um, but what I realized was the smallmouth wanted it so aggressive and loud so they could hear the bait. And this bait doesn't actually chug that much. It walks extremely well. It's a really nice subtle bait if you're pond fishing or you're fishing anywhere that's really, really slick, calm. Um, but what I did was I, I went with this Rico popper, which has a nice click to it. The smallmouth love it. Uh, and it chugs really loud too. You can really rip it and it chugs and, and just that attention and that super strong current pushing up on those rock structures was the absolute ticket. Joe caught his uh, big smallmouth actually on a walking bait too. So those fish were pretty aggressive and willing to come up and eat. So whenever those smallmouth would miss our topwater bait, um, or we knew the fish were there and we just couldn't get them to commit to it, we'd always come back with either a tube or a little craw bait. These two baits are absolutely killers as both follow-up baits whenever you're fishing around these rocky, uh, super strong current areas, or just good for pitching. Pitch that bait up in front of that rock structure and let it come so naturally against that current. That's a huge thing with river fishing. You want to get away with the lightest weight you possibly can because those fish are used to seeing everything their entire lives be coming down, blowing down with the current. If you have a really heavy weight that's maybe pegged on a Texas rig, I leave all these Texas rigs unpegged, by the way. That's a huge thing, especially with current fishing. If you have a super heavy weight pegged down, the current's coming this way, your bait's going to go straight down. Those fish see that all the time. It's super unnatural. And it'll just, it'll keep you from getting maybe any bites. I've seen times when I've done that before when I just started river fishing where I was getting my butt handed to me. And I'm not talking about they were catching three to one. I'm talking about they were catching 15 of them before I got a bite. It's crazy how much of a difference in unpegged weight in clean water and especially in current will make a huge difference. This is a little jackal cover crawl, an awesome little natural, it doesn't have any action, natural little bait where you know that fish is right there because he just blew up, you pitch right on it, you can catch a fish. And then a tube bait, this is a dry creek tube actually, really like this color, changeable blue, check it out, it's a really, really cool smallmouth color and they love that, I've caught them all over the place on it. So that's what we were doing with the smallmouth throughout the river system. You know, another thing that's really good for smallmouth on those sand drops and any other type of sand structure, you saw old Tommy Biffle win that tournament on the Mississippi River. We never got the bite going really well, but it's something Joe did a lot behind me when he was pulling off the sand drops and stuff, and he caught a lot of fish, was a swing head and a creature bait. Obviously, again, it's a heavier bait, so it's good for working on the bottom, a lot of times there's so many of these sand drops and so much of this structure, it's good to have something you can crank and you can reel in and cover more water with and just drag in a tube really, really slow. That's when we pulled out the swing head. So we caught a lot of fish on that and other different creature baits that are like this, beaver style baits, you know, structure bugs, stuff like that. 
awesome, awesome bait for when you're fishing those sand drops. So let's get into the largemouth fishing. You know, obviously the first first spot we fished on the first day, it was a rip rap bank. And a lot of guys comment on that video and we're like, you're throwing a frog on a rip rap bank? Here's the deal with that. This bait and this bait are both poppers. They both work well. But this bait is completely different from this bait and not just for the fact that it's weedless. This bait makes a lot different noise. It has a lot different action. It's got legs. It feels more natural if the fish come up and just suck it in. And for whatever reason, you can just catch bass on a popping frog no matter what the cover. If there's a lot of bait in the area, they have a good place to come up and ambush prey. I love to throw a popping frog on any type of rock structure, especially in low light conditions. Obviously that's what we had first thing in the morning. We got to our spot and I did notice there was a little bit of grass mixed in. So there's a little bit of grass mixed in. Uh, it was just kind of stringy grass. So I could have worked the popper on the outside edge. Joe started hammering them on the popping frog. So I put this on, caught a couple fish that ended up, uh, I think we ended up weighing those fish in. We culled a bunch of times. The popping frog is absolutely the ticket. You know, another thing he used the popping frog for was like I said, fishing those channel areas where there was really strong current. Anytime a fish can get up underneath a cut bank or behind a pot of grass or whatever, a popping frog is great. You know, even in really strong current, you can whack them on this popping frog in areas like that. Even in the middle of the day, I caught a lot of fish on a popping frog. In the middle of the day, sun was up, they don't care. They see something popping over their heads. And the reason I like this so much is it's not a treble hook bait. Um, so you're not going to, one, you're not going to get snagged as much because you need to put this thing right up there into the grass, into that bank. And two, you're not going to lose as many fish when you have them on this. You get a good hook set in them and that fish has come to the boat. So the thing I probably caught the most fish on was something I almost didn't even pack and wasn't planning on throwing at all. And that is the little seven inch power worm. You know, that thing's an absolute killer. I got my butt whipped with it two years ago. And so I decided I'm going to put that in my arsenal. And it's been a great, great bait ever since. But a light bulb went off in my head when I was fishing that first riprap area. And that was, there was all these little sticks and laydowns coming off this rock area. There was a ton of bait in the area. And I just said, boom, you know, I, there's grass in there too. I, I've done this before. I've seen this scenario before. And a seven inch worm is perfect for working whenever there's a little isolated laydown. Uh, a little isolated patch of grass, whatever, on that riprap bank. This guy is absolutely killer. And I actually, I ended up throwing them on the sand drops too when there was a largemouth there. They ate it there. I threw it on the channel banks. They ate it there. It's a great fish catching bait. Um, a lot of guys don't throw it because they throw the 10 inch or an even bigger worm because they don't think you're going to get the quality on it. But this guy, it gets bit from all sizes of fish. You might catch more fish on it. You might not catch the quality on it. Um, all the time, but you're gonna know a fisher in the area with that guy. It's so hard for him to resist that. A little bit of a roll there. All right, so the last bait we're gonna talk about is super important in river fishing, current fishing, and a lot of other different types of fishing, but we're talking about river fishing right now, and that's a swim jig. I use two different variations of swim jigs when I'm river fishing or fishing anything in current. The first one I use when I know there's a lot of bait fish present, the water could be just about any color except for super, super clean. I don't like the bright white color and the super clean, but that is a sexy shad colored swim jig. I used a six cent swim jig the whole time. Love this Rage Menace trailer. It's really small, but it actually it puts out a pretty big profile in the water when you're fishing on a swim jig. Perfect little shad imitating swim swim jig right here. And this, this is something you can work around grass clumps. You can work it around any type of cover, any type of undercut bank, any type of grass pot or grass patch. Great, great bait for that. And one more bait that's been an absolute killer for me uh, in river systems, and I probably shouldn't be sharing this with you, but I will, is a, a swim jig black and blue with this salty chunk trailer. You know, like you look at it, you're like, that thing has got zero action. You're not gonna catch them on it. It doesn't look like a swim jig. It looks like a pitching jig. Great thing is you can pitch it, but after you pitch it, swim it back and these little tails go crazy in the water. I like this guy for whenever there is a big long lay down or log, a big current break, and you can just slowly wind it. You don't even gotta pump it. I think I know you think you gotta twitch it and pump it with these legs. These legs will do all the action on their own. They'll, they'll just barely shimmy. 
it's a, it's a way I've caught some giant bass in the past. Some, some of the, my biggest river fish have come on a black and blue, black and purple like this one from Six Cents um, swim jig with that big salty chunk trailer. Like I said, anywhere there's large mouths and you have an isolated piece of cover, that guy is a killer. So that's what we did at the river. That's Those are our baits, our techniques, everything we did. We got third place, we lost by a pound, that sucked. We could have definitely won. I think we lost fish that may have won it for us or put us very, very close, but that's how it goes. That's fishing. You know, you didn't necessarily see us catch a lot of fish on some of these baits I mentioned, but they were the deal, and that's what we were catching them on in practice and maybe some smaller fish or pike or whatever, but I know these baits will work in river systems. I hope I helped you guys learn a few new things uh, for fishing currents, so please leave a comment below. Let me know if you learned something, if you like these types of videos where I break down what we did and what I know um, about fishing, different types of systems, different types of giant river systems or lakes or anywhere else I travel to. I'd really appreciate if you took the time to do that. You know, speaking of that, I'm heading out to fish some brand new bodies of water next week. I'm super excited maybe getting back to a river system as well. So I will catch you guys next time. Take it easy, MFers. I am out of here. Peace. I'm not sorry. I can't stop with a love like mine.